Hello and welcome to this introduction video. My name is Mattis Leardrup. I'm the creator of ESEC and I would like to show you how to get and install ESEC as well as how to get a few example data that you can use to play around and learn using ESEC. Finally, I will also introduce you to some of the basic parts of ESEC's interface. So first, we will need to open a web browser I have one here, and then go to the address address and type ESEC e -A -S -E -Q dot net. That will take us take us to the web page, and on the front page there is a get it now link. If you click on that, then you have a link to down that al allows you to download the most recent version of ESEC. And while that downloads, then I think we also should download a set of example data. You can get that by typing ESEC, e -A -S -E -Q net, and then workshop.zip. Use small characters only. That will download some data that you can use for playing around. It might take a couple of minutes to download that file, depending on your connection and the distance. And while that is downloading, then we can copy ESEC to the desktop. So now we have ESEC on the desktop. And it, since it's a zip file, then you will need to extract all the contents of the zip file before you can run ESEC. So we just extract it into a separate folder on the desktop. And now we have three files there is a readme file that can explain you a bit more about ESEC, uh, about the files. Um, and then we have two different versions of ESEC. For most, if not all applications, I recommend that you use the version which is just called ESEC.exe. That will require a 64-bit version of Windows, but they are very common. Um, the older, uh, the other file ESEC. 32-bit is uh, is made for all the Windows versions, and it will be very limited in the amount of memory that it can access. So you can't analyze that many data sets in that version. So please, if possible, then try to use ESEC.exe on a relatively new computer with uh, sufficient horsepowers. So you can just start ESEC. There is no further installation required. You just double-click on ESEC. And then the first time, it will ask you if you really want to run ESEC. And then ESEC will start up. And the first time while you're in ESEC, you are encouraged, sorry, you're encouraged to write your name and affiliations. So we have a little more information about who is using ESEC that is hopefully becoming useful in a future grant application. You can also you can also use ESEC without typing those information and just go in as an anonymous anonymous user if you are concerned about uh, your personal information being used by us. So in ESEC here we have three different types of data. They are presented up here in these three panels. They are called data sets gene sets and region sets. The data sets are your chipsec experiments. They can also be RNA-seq, RIPSEC, uh, methylation data, or something different. But they need to be mapped, so they need to be aligned to a reference genome before you can import it. And they also need to be single read data. Then we have some gene sets, which are information about the positions of your genes and gene features in your reference genome. You can download it directly from UCC using this download link. You just select the, the gene set that you'd like to download. And finally, we have some region sets, which are your points of interest, your regions of interest. Think of them as your viewpoints. You can, uh, so if you want to visualize, for instance, your chipsec signal at CPG islands, then you need to have the coordinates of these CPG islands imported as a region set. They could also be enhancers or peaks generated with another program or from a published paper. And you can also use ESEC to generate uh, 
region sets. We will get back to that in a later presentation. Finally, we have uh, an area here with plots. Um, as right now it's completely empty, but as we go on, analyze and visualize the data, then this area tends to be filled with a lot of different plots. We will see more of that later. We have some tools controlling the plots, and as you can see, most of them are inactivated. Um, they will require you to import some data. They suggest which type of data you need before you can use them. Um, and we also have some tools here, some analysis tools, um, and they will also tell you what type of data they will need to be become activated. So as we import different data into ESEC, then you will see these icons becoming available. But before we do that, I'll just introduce the last panels over here. We have the squeaks, which is a chat form that you can use to write messages to other ESIC users um, and hopefully get pro uh, some response if you turn into a problem. The, there's also another panel here. Um, right now it's not active, but if you click on a set of data anywhere in ESIC, then it will show you some information about how that was generated and what was done to the data during your work or other people's work. So this will contain auto-generated descriptions of all the files or plots uh, imported in ESEC. And the final panel here is the navigation panel where um, if you use ESEC as a genome browser then you can type in coordinates here or zoom in, zoom out. Um, you will do that later on. If you think they take up too much space then you can just minimize the panels then they are not interfering with your work. So now we will go on and import some data into ESEC. So we will go to the folder on the desktop where we put the files from the workshop. We have four different bed files, four different aligned chipset files at our disposal in this from this workshop zip file. And we can just click here then it will import all of them. Oh, we, we get this import wizard where we have some uh, information about the columns of the files. And in this case, ESEC just guesses correctly on where to find uh, the names for the chromosomes. That is what is entered here. The start coordinate, and the end coordinate, and the strand information. The strand information is hidden, yeah, put in column 6. There's also some information about uh, how the strand information is coded. Now they're called plus and minus. They could also be called something differently. If they look differently up here, then you should probably change that accordingly. Um, and then there is some information here that uh, I suggest you don't really change uh, as a new user. One of the things which are good to know perhaps is uh, that ESEC by default will uh, filter for unique reads to avoid PCR uh, artifacts if you're working with small genomes such as yeast or bacterial genomes then you might favor from disabling this but for people working with mammalian genomes then I suggest that you use this by default and leave it untouched. So we'll just click OK and use the default settings for all of these four files and once we have done that then ESEC will start to import the files. You can see the progress here. It does take a bit of time, so while it is doing that, then we can start to import some of the region sets. Now we could try to import some CPG islands here. And ESEC will now need some help here to figure out what is what in this file. So the first column uh, contains some numbers from the from from the CPG islands. Um, the second contains chromosomal information, the name of the chromosome, and ESEC has correctly guessed that this column contains that. But ESEC cannot, in this case, figure out where to find the um, the start position, which is in column 3 and 4. So we will help ESEC, telling that the start coordinate is here, the end coordinate is here, by clicking here. And then ESEC will also suggest to import the remaining columns as parameters that you can use for later analysis. Uh, I suggest that we do that. 
that will allow you to visualize some of the features in the f the f this file uh, later on. So now that the data sets and the region set has finished importing, then it would be a good idea to save the data as a session file. That's a single file containing all the data sets, the gene sets and the region sets, as well as potential plots if you have some, and auto-generate description, as a single file. That will cut down the time it takes to import the data a lot and make it easier for you to find your way through your data. Saving a session is, is done up here in the session um, session area and you just click save and then you can save it and we'll just call it test. It might take some seconds. The more data you have, the longer time it takes. But in this case it was very fast. And the session snake can be loaded as any other file, a word file, PowerPoint file, or things like that, and make it easy for you to go back to the analysis and the stage you were at at a certain time. We'll do it later again once we have created some plots, save it as a session together with underlying data. So now we have a region set, and we have four different uh, data sets. These are not big data sets, they have been downsampled, so they don't take up that much space and are fast to down be downloaded. If you click on the region set here, then you can see some information about the CPG islands. You have the coordinates over here. You can browse them one by one. And then um, we can also, now that we have a region set and some data sets, then we can start to make the first plot. I suggest that we make a heat map here of the four different data sets. And you can change the order of the heat maps, how they are presented on the lab desk, by simply dragging and dropping here. So if you wanted to show the K36 data first with the ES and ES first endodermal, ES endodermal, then we have an order here, and then we can instruct ESEC to visualize the signal at the CPG islands. The plots are updating, and now we can see the signal, how it looks like. Um, if we, for instance, wanted to um, change the order of the CPG islands, then we can use this sort function here. And in this case, we could say it might be interesting to change the order according to the size of the CPG islands. And if we do that, then ESEC will automatically update the heat maps. Now you can see we have the broadest CPG islands down here and the more narrow CPG islands up here. You can also see in the heat maps that we have an increased density here around the CPG islands of the K27 trimethylation data uh, and uh, that the CPG islands are devoid of K36 trimethylation. That is entirely to be expected from published data. So when we move the mouse over one of these plots, then you can see that we have a, a that we get some text that is essentially a small legend explaining what you see. You can also, if the legend doesn't really contain all of the information you'd like to know, then you can also go into the descriptions here and then just select th this particular plot and then you can see here the legend and you can see how the data were handled before the plot was made. And we also have some in in information here about how many regions we're looking at and how they were sorted. That will update along with the plots if you change the sort order or if you uh, change which population you're looking at. Another type of plots which are very common to use is a track. We have a, a selection of different tracks. I prefer using these filled tracks. And again, we can control the order of the plots. Let's use the same order that will probably make it most simple. And then we should get four new plots here. Move them up here. And um, it will show you the signal at the uh, entire population of CPG islands in the first plot. We can wait for it to finish. Um, this type of plot shows it as superimposed signal. That means that it has essentially ma made a track of each of the CPG islands and then laid it on top. And then you get a color coding 
that correspond to the number of tracks that have a, have a particular level of, uh, of signal. So once you have created the layout of the plots that you would like to use for a figure in a publication or in a report, then you can go into the snapshot tool up here and then ESEC will save you a file of the plots, a high resolution TIFF file, and if we go and look at that file in the workshop folder, then you can see that ESEC has by default enumerated all of the plots in the figure, A, B, C, D, E, and so forth, and in the folder there is a text file, an auto-generated text file here, with corresponding information, figure A here, figure B here, figure C, D, and so forth, about the how the figures were generated. So there is a legend and there is uh, a description with uh, jargon that uh, can be understand understood by uh, life scientists. So there's a description of the workflow that you can use for your materials and methods section. If you don't want uh, ESEC to um, add this spacing between the plots, these auto enumerate enumerations, then you can go into options here and then you can uncheck add descriptions to snapshots. Then if you make a new snapshot, then ESEC will no longer um, add these automatic enumeration and you will have the panels or the different plots more tightly put together. This might also be a good opportunity to save the data as a session. So now we'll save it again. Let's call it test2. And then we can load the data again. So now all the data are erased and we just load uh, uh, the session from before. And there you are. It will ask whether want to replace some of the chromosome names. There's no reason to do that. So we just use the default settings. And here you are. Plots look the same, data are the same. So we can also select a single region or a subset of regions here. And then you will see the tracks updating accordingly. So if you click on a single region, then we'll see that particular locus in the tracks. And um, if we click on multiple regions, then we will see, in this case, 1,851 different loci being superimposed on top of each other. We can also click on the loci one by one up here. Now we don't really see that much signal here, but if we go down here, then we are perhaps more lucky. Um, and we can use the navigation panel. It will update according to the locus we are looking at. And if we take and click on this red knob, then we can change the, the viewpoint, zoom in, zoom in by moving down, uh, so, sorry, zooming in by moving up, and zooming out by moving down, and we can pan to the left or the right, so downstream, upstream. And uh, the buttons over here will do the same, but and then you can type any locus that you're interested in. You can also instruct ESEC to download a gene set from UCSC, that's what we are doing now. Now it is downloading HD19, which is one of the reference genomes from the human genome. And it's the one which corresponds to the data we have imported. And once it is downloaded, then we get this import wizard. ESEC will uh, know the format of the imported gene sets from UCC, so it will make a correct interpretation of where to find in which columns to find the appropriate information. So you don't need, need to change anything here. But if you have your own format, then you will need to instruct ESEC on where to find accession numbers, uh, gene start positions, se uh, coding sequences, and things like that. 
but right now we can just go with the default then it will import the genes and once we have a gene set imported then we will start to have gene information here in the tracks and we can also go to a particular list a particular gene just by typing the name now we can go to B2 then you see the locus here, the OP2 locus, and we can of course zoom in and zoom out uh, using the nav navigation tool. And when we have a gene set imported, then we can use the gene so set to extract regions into a region set. We use this tool over here for that. And uh, if we, for instance, wanted to extract the description start sites, then we change this setting to start. Then we are changing some regions that go from the start of the gene to the start of the gene. Um, we could also introduce an offset. Let's say we wanted to have some regions that correspond to minus 1000 base pairs upstream the TSS to plus 1000 base pairs downstream the TSS. Then we type it here, click OK. Now we have 54,000 regions corresponding to the transcription start sites or the 2000 base pairs around the transcription start sites. You can see the coordinates here. And we could, for instance, set up some new heat maps corresponding to these. You can see now that we have a new set of regions to visualize uh, as heat maps. We just change the order so it corresponds to the previous heat maps. Move the plots up here. Now you can see we have signal here, K36 signal downstream of the transcription start sites. Actually, I, I didn't really manage to match the order, so I can do that afterwards just by moving the plots around. Now it matches, so we have K36 over here, and we have K27 trimethylation over here. Sorry. So now it matches the order. We have K36 trimethylation here, and we have K27 trimethylation here in these four plots. Up here, we are looking at the CPG islands. Down here, we are now looking at the transcription start sites. And um, they are, of course, also clickable, just as the other set of regions were. So you can visualize the fraction of, um, of regions that you like to. We could also gate out a subset of regions. For instance, we might be interested in the most broad CBG islands, so we just select those. And then we select a small scissor here. And we gate out a new set of regions up here. They're called from and then the original region set and we could call them broad CGI's and then we can duplicate these plots if you select the plots like I just did selecting moving the mouse over all of them and then you could click on this duplicate button here and then we'll get some new plots that are just like those that we duplicated they will show the same population in the same order but um, we wanted them to show the new broad CBG islands so we can do that by clicking here on next region set that will go to the next on the list that is the genes and if we click once more then it will instruct these plots to show the broad CBG islands here this subpopulation that we just gated out a good thing to know when you're working with the plots is that each of them have a number of different uh, icons associated to them. You can also duplicate them separately, like we just did for all of them. Then we have an, a duplicate of the plot up there. You can rechange the size according to what you like. You can move it around. If you want to move a plot, in a single plot, then you click on this part. and uh, you can also close it here. 
Um, and then there is a very important button, this one. That will show you the settings for that particular plot. And there is a lot of things that can be controlled for each of the plots. For instance, the size of the window that you are visualizing. This plot shows you 20,000 base pairs surrounding the CBG islands. But we could, uh, for instance, be interested in uh, showing a more narrow window if we wanted to zoom in and just show the 20, uh, 2,000 base pairs surrounding the CBG island. Then we just change the value, move the mouse out of this menu, and then it will update. And you now see a thousand base pairs on each side of the CBG island. If you want to do that for a number of plots, then select them all, and you can find a similar button up here, settings, and then you can enter the window size that you'd like to see. Now let's take 4,000 base pairs all together, then we'll see plus minus 2,000 base pairs. Looks good. We can also change the scale if we change the density and for instance if we need a more contrastful signal then we could go from 5 which is the current number um, to for instance 3 then the contrast will be increased a bit on the plot so I think now we have covered some of the basic settings here in ESEC you have seen a bit of the interface you have seen how to set up some plots and how to do some simple differences on it and uh, I strongly encourage that you uh, run this demo up here to learn a bit more about ESIC and also if you choose the tutorials here then you will get a step-by-step -step instruction on how to do a particular type of plots or analysis on your own data you can of course also use these example data. The tutorial will take you through step by step, highlight what you need to learn and uh, hopefully you will find that uh, useful in the future when learning about ESEC. I think I'll leave it to you to explore the tutorials further and uh, thank you very much for your attention.